Hello, I'm Chef James. And I'm Chef Bryn. And welcome to the Tasty Tiger Cooking Show. Today we'll be making a confetti kielbasa skillet. And this is a really nice and affordable dish for a lot of households all around the world. And we're going to show you guys how to make it today. We're going to start off with our cuts. He's going to cut onion, or mince, garlic, and onion. And I'm going to go in with the kielbasa. Okay. I'm going to cut it in half first. Whoa. Oh. Then we're going to cut it in a fourth of an inch. This dish was actually originated from Poland. And I made this a lot when I was younger because my grandma is actually Polish, so we had a lot of this going on in our house. Uh, well, I think kielbasa is a pretty good protein in terms of taste, and especially turkey kielbasa. Uh, it's got a lot of flavors that are kind of tasty. Um, it's pretty good as uh, something to just kind of eat like a hot dog, or in this case, uh, chopped up in a skillet. So I'm slicing the onion after having it, so that we can have some uh, thinner slices as opposed to uh, mince, but if you want to mince it, uh, it's also good like that. And the kielbasa isn't going to cut in like perfect cuts, it's going to kind of fall apart. As you can see here, it kind of looks like ground beef. <laughs> but some of them will work out like this. But it all will blend together in the rice anyway, so it's not a huge deal. I just say about onions making me cry. <clears throat> James having a hard time cutting those onions. I'm having a hard time. I'm just having a hard time seeing. <laughs> Want to give any tips on how to cut? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> James is a little emotional today. Yeah, very emotional. <laughs> James had this growing up, even though he's not Polish. Am I right, James? Partially. Interesting. You can actually, kielbasa can be prepared in way more ways than this. Kind of like how James was saying, it can be like a hot dog, it can be smoked, it can be dried. Because it's me, I mean, it's not me, can, but it's kind of interesting. And kielbasa is, uh, also isn't limited to chicken, or isn't limited to turkey, is it? No, chicken, beef, uh, all other meats. Alright. A lot of the times people will take the ends off because they're just it's really tough. Not that fun to eat. A little bit of a chef snack, if you will. Alright. Now I'm going to grab a pan so we can find the cookie. Then we're going to add some oil into the pan. Yeah. Yeah. You can add that too. Beautiful. All these 
flavors go together really well. That's why we're cooking together, like the meat and the mushrooms. It helps enhance the flavor of the kielbasa. It's kind of why we're not adding it with like the peppers and the corn right away, because these bring out and enhance the flavor of the kielbasa. So we'll let this get, uh, we'll just cook for around uh, five minutes. Um, then we'll add our garlic, in this case shallots. Got any stories to tell while we're passing the time? Um, well one time when my grandma was making kielbasa at our house, she usually made it because it's pretty inexpensive and it's a lot of meat. So rather than getting like salmon or some sort of fish, we got kielbasa because it fed everyone and it's pretty easy to cook. And she's Polish, so why not? But yeah, one time we were making it and I was trying to help my grandma, but I ended up flipping the pan like over on the stove. <laughs> And she's crazy, like, very, very overreactive, and you can imagine, I was never allowed in the kitchen ever again. I'm listening. Mm -hmm. The meat does take a little longer to cook because it is so thick and, like, tough and hard to get through, but it's all worth it in the end. A lot of people get like kielbasa and broth mixed up, which I don't really know how because I don't know if you saw how big that thing was. And broth are not that big, but you can eat it as a broth, but it's very thick. Most people wouldn't. I think some Polish people might make fun of you if you do, but hey, worth it for It smells good. It's often like the most common meat to go with that is kielbasa is lamb, which is kind of surprising. Maybe not really in South Dakota, but in any other state, that would be very surprising. Hopefully we'll be able to fit everything in this pan. Alright, now seems like a good time to add in our shallots. Yeah, uh, so now we're going to add in our broth and seasoning. Uh, this is chicken broth. Uh, we're going to be careful not to yeah. Splash any on ourselves. And this is a garlic and herb uh, seasoning blend. About three, four teaspoons. Try to do a better job than I did. Uh, I'm getting a bit more spread out over the food. The chicken broth will also make like the meat taste a lot better because it's already marinating in there. And I always thought marinating was like, you had to keep it in there for like a day or like a night, but we made pork chops earlier this year and we only had to marinate it for 15 minutes and it was very, very strong. So, something new, learn something new every day, I guess. Because my mom always makes salmon and she marinates it for like a day or two. So. And we're going to keep this at a boil and wait until all the... Uh, liquid is evaporated away, and then afterwards we're going to add in the rest of our ingredients and wait for it to uh, finish uh, cooking through. There you go. Alright, let's add this thing. This one does this. Here. So have some black beans in a colander that have been draining for a little bit. Here we go. Do the honors. Mm. 
these black beans, uh, you want to make sure, since they're from a can, uh, you want to make sure that they're rinsed well and that they're uh, drained out completely of any liquid that is inside of the can when you get them, and that improves their quality and removes any excess starch and salt. Fully packed in this pan today, it looks like. So we added our rice, we added our peppers, cilantro, cilantro. and beans. So you could say that this is kind of like a Polish slash Mexican meal because you're adding rice, beans, corn, peppers, kind of like all of it. Take a few more minutes for our newest additions to cook, our peppers. Get the corn a little more warm. See what I did there? All that rhyming. Yeah, pretty catchy over here. <laughs> All right. It's looking delicious. Want to take a stab? Sure. We're going to want to be careful not to overcook this because uh, the rice can get a little... Um, uh, the rice will kind of be in the package a little um, coarser than typical. And so we want to make sure to cook it in um, some kind of liquid to make sure that it um, gets a little uh, softer and then it's more ready to serve. All right. How much longer you, would you think we should keep it in there for? Maybe a minute, maybe another minute. Uh, it could be ready now, but it's probably better to just uh, be sure. Mm -hmm. so obviously, you don't really want an uncooked bit of rice or an uncooked bean. Better safe than sorry, right, bud? Exactly. Oh. And of course, you don't have to use these kind of peppers, but it definitely adds to the overall flavor and sweetness of these peppers. Uh, adds quite a bit. I think that looks pretty good, so I'll probably take it off now. Professional. Thanks, <coughs> probably. So this is about four servings worth, but we're going to show you one serving. Mm. Make sure to get in there carefully. Try not to get in your countertop or your stove. So it just ends up making a little bit of a mess. Try to get every ingredient in there so you can get the best of both worlds. Nice distribution. Try to even them out. And there we go. Looking good. All right, well, I think that's just all we got for you today, so. This has been the Tasty Tiger Cooking Show, and we'll see you next time.